Um, what is up everybody it is your boy fry and today we're gonna be looking at uh basically doing some uh vocal editing 101 in fl studio right because as you know fl studio is um pretty hard to work with at times when editing vocals so yeah i'll basically break down how i have uh, self-taught myself how to get you know just a clean and kind of concise looking recording which makes life a lot easier you know when creating art especially when you're recording yourself um you know, the last thing on your mind is making sure that um, everything is kind of in order and all of that. But I've over time taught myself how to, uh, either when recording people or just recording myself for fun, just to kind of, you know, lay things out in a way where I can just, uh, you know, find something that I need to. You don't have kind of part of the, you know, main verse down in the ad lib kind of area or whatever. You know, you might not even have an ad lib area. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, the first thing I've kind of written everything down, otherwise I will completely forget how to handle all of this. but. The first thing is compiling vocals basically in Pro Tools, um, you know, people call it comping, whatever you want to call it, but in FL Studio, no one really speaks about these things. So the way I do it is um, when I'm first recording, right, I will make a bunch of space. So let's say, for example, all this doesn't exist and all we have is the, let's just say the beat in this channel and all of these empty kind of spaces, right? What I'll do is I will call this main, right? And then let's just say I will call that doubles. You know, so now I've created a kind of area for, damn. I've kind of created an area where, you know, I can have my take one, take two, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So, you know, for example, if all of that was red, then um, over time I will end up with, so as you can see here, this this is from the nav template, if anyone's wondering, uh, you can go and purchase that, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, I'll play this for you now, notice if you're interested in hearing it. But yeah, as you can see, we've got all of these different takes. Um, this is obviously all one take, take 15. And the way you can see, just as a side note, is uh, select all similar clips. Okay, so there we go. Now we know that those two clips are different, right? So that's pretty easy to figure out. But, you know, so back to this little concept. You know, once you've got all of your takes, you can then begin chopping up, you know, the parts that you like and don't like, and then compiling them into one vocal take right and i'll speak on how to get them all to one dedicated mixer track for this video we've got them in the uh channel 14 so as you can see when i double click i know everything in this little track is in 14 because as you know um fl studio kind of sucks in respect that you can't i don't know probably in this version you can but i've never figured out how to do it maybe we can figure it out right now which i really doubt group with above track nah you see the thing is in pro tools right when you what did i just do when you move a track up or down so for example this is track three it'll sync in um the mixer right so whatever's in track three will be on track three in the playlist area right so this is called the playlist area this is called the mixer area so yeah this might get a bit complicated but i need to give you the whole scenario um i forgot where i was but anyway um so yeah that's basically how i would you know compile everything so once you've got all your takes there you go they're all here you can just kind of double check and click and make sure everything is uh, where it's supposed to be so yeah you know the reason why keeping it organized is important is because you know you've got a good overview of what you've done and what you haven't done so for example i know okay cool the mono vocal is done um and all my spare takes have been um sent to the bottom here so as you can see all i've done is you know so for example that's take two all i'm going to do is just make it smaller and i can just mute it you can either mute it or you can use my favorite tool which you can just press t and you can just highlight and click so i just hold and left click and you can mute or unmute and um there you go you know what i'm saying you're ready to go so generally i would keep all of these in the smallest state size or channel size and just mute them and I always know I can just uh, zoom in again and cut and just replace, you know what I'm saying? So there you go. Um, the next thing obviously is rooting to mix, as I said, so I already kind of touched on that, but you just want to make sure everything is grouped to one channel. You know, a lot of the times I get projects from people running out of breath, working in FL Studio and um, they'll have like, you know, one verse is consisting of like this many tracks, right? And they're all unnamed, which kind is kind of annoying. So for example, um, let's just create kind of a duplicate here. So as you can see, this is called our nav recording template mic input 15. What will happen is they'll just go there and um, 
you know what I'm saying? So the shortcut for that is Control and L, just a quick root. You can also uh, quick root by going to here, for example. So we go to channel 34 and actually clicking, boom. Oh, that went back to nine. Okay, that doesn't always work. Don't, don't uh, trust my judgment on that. But yeah, so let's say for example, you've, um, you know, what I like to do is, so for example, you know, we've got this hook track over here and my CPU is dying at the moment. I need to get a better fan because my computer's pretty hot. It is summertime where I'm at. And yeah, so basically what I like to do is, you know, I'll rename the track and I'll call it hook, right? So that, you know, I can send this track to hook. And then when I decide to export all of these tracks, right? So when I go to uh, export and separate tracks, I've got all of these different things all named, right? So I've got, you know, the ad loop, I've got the hook, I've got the background vocals, I've got everything so that, you know, someone like me or a Pro Tools engineer, whoever can import the tracks, and know exactly what's going on. You know, the worst thing is having to run through a hundred different takes and, you know, you you separating like a million tracks. There's no point in doing that, right? There's just no point in doing that. So it makes sense to group everything. If you really take what, uh, this kind of stuff seriously, then, um, you know, you'll make everyone else's life easier. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, um, the other thing I'd like to speak on quickly is uh, level adjustment, right? So obviously, you know, I've gotten pretty good at dealing with uh, recordings with NFL Studio, so this is not so much an issue for me but I can always hear when something is for example too loud so I'll just give you an example here what we'll do is we will um, just create a duplicate track right so I'm gonna mute this one and this is the exact same thing but all we're gonna do is uh, duplicate it right make unique make unique and uh, let's just increase the level by three decibels right so we got a lot of compression going on in this um, little chain here but hopefully you'll be able to hear that this take will be much louder so yeah let's go on the dash, yeah, we racing now. You ain't sticking to oh e you know even better because the compression is so good um oh we've actually got uh automation somewhere oh, what have i done oops i've done the wrong track sorry about that hmm. uh, i did not make unique but did I? I did. Whatever, it doesn't matter. But basically the point I'm trying to make is let's just say we got a track that's too quiet, right? So yeah, we racing now. You ain't sticking to the script, right? gotta scratch you out. So what you can do is you can basically you've already seen me use the level adjustment knob, right? So as you can you can just double click on your clip, go to the little tool miscellaneous area, and then you can use this. The reason why I prefer using this is because it's definite, right? It starts at zero and it ends at twenty-one, it ends at minus infinity. Whereby this is a bit complicated. FL Studio decided to be, you know, cool and started at minus 5.8, I think. So the reason why I use the level adjustment is so I know exactly how much I'm reducing and increasing, right? So for example, I felt like that was too soft, then I can just increase it, right? So let's say it was three minus 3.9 decibels too soft, right? You ain't stick it. And then I end up at zero, right? So let's just say in theory, zero is like four right so we've increased it to four now we know you ain't sticking to the script got it the level's perfect right so yeah that's pretty much how i would do all of that the reason why i say level first is so you don't go and um try and compress something for example you know you go ahead and compress da da da, -da and you're trying to compress for one thing you know what i'm saying so you're trying to use the compressor to increase one clip when you've got you know for example eight other clips that sound fine you know what i'm saying you don't want to work backwards you want to work forwards so yeah, that's pretty much what I can really uh, talk about. I was going to talk about organizing the mixer, but I think that's a whole different video. And I have spoken on this before in previous videos. Uh, you know, once again, shout out to everyone that have liked and subscribed. You know, much appreciated. I'm just thinking of kind of videos that aren't online. What I will do is I will do a video on, um, I don't know, that's pretty much sums up vocal editing in FL Studio. I mean, I could do a video on, uh, you know, how to get all these cool little tricks. So for example, in the sprite, yes, now. So you can hear that really slightly in the background. I could do a video on all of that stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it's up to you guys and girls out there. I uh, recommend anything you'd like to see. Uh, if you enjoyed the video and you feel like you learned something, you know, I try and release content that no one else has done before, um, which is pretty hard on YouTube because, um, you know, one thing about YouTube is a lot of people will not give you all of the uh, info you need. They'll kind of keep you you know hooked in for next week for next week which i think is not really uh 
a good thing to do i mean it's good for us creators but at the same time it doesn't uh fully help you so yeah uh if you like the video drop a like as i said before and yeah peace out